study of worms is called helminthology. So here we are talking about uh, worms with the two different phylums. They are called flat worms placed under phylum platyhelminthes, round worms placed under phylum ascalminthes. Just few characters to remember. It's very easy to understand and very easy to remember, right? So let's start. So first, this is phylum platyhelminthes. So they are so called platyhelminth. Helminth is worm, right? So they are so called because these animals are dorsoventrally flattened. So because they are dorsoventrally flattened, we call them as flatworms. Now this is the first triploblastic phylum in the animal kingdom. So this is the first triploblastic phylum which are with bilateral symmetry. Even I can say that this is the first bilateral symmetrical phylum because these are first triploblastic, first bilateral symmetrical phylum. With, they do not have any coelom, they are acelomates and with organ level of organization. So this is a little higher organization when you compare this with porifers and didarians because they have cellular and tissue level. This is the first animal with organ level of organization. So if the question comes straight away, so the triploblastic bilaterally symmetrical acelomates with organ level of organization or platyhelminthes. Why they are so called? Because they are dorsoventrally flattened body. So we call them as platyhelminthes, right? So this is the first thing and these are the basic characters with which this phylum can be identified. Now the question is, where are these animals found? There are few or free living forms and most of these are parasites. They act as endoparasites. So these are endoparasites live in animals, including human. So they act as endoparasites in human, right? And mostly they live inside the elementary canal. They are called as luminar parasites. So fine. The parasites have got some specific adaptations because the host is having host defense mechanism. Parasite should withstand the host defensive mechanism. So as a result, parasite need to show some adaptations because most of these are parasites. They have got some specific adaptations to survive inside the host body. Let us find out one or two characters of these adaptations. Number one first. So the body is first covered by tegument. This is an enzyme resistant layer and also they have hooks and suckers with which they get attached themselves to the host body. These are some specific parasitic adaptations of platyhelminthes, right? So tegument is which is acting as an enzyme resistant layer and hooks and suckers are responsible for attaching to the host body wall or elementary canal or into the lumen they get attached. So these are some of these specific parasitic adaptations exhibited by all these platyhelminthes. Mostly they live as endoparasites. There are some free living forms are also present which are aquatic and terrestrial forms but most of them are endoparasites. Next, so coming to the digestion, how exactly digestion system is done. Right, so here the thing what you have to remember is in some of the platyhelminthes they have elementary canal which is incomplete gut which is called a sac like gut. That means the elementary canal is only with a single opening which act as both for ingestion as well as for ejection, right? So that is what elementary canal is present in some. Like an example you can take like fasciola hepatica, which is a liver fluke. It has elementary canal, which has only one opening, which acts as both for ingestion as well as for ejection, which is called sac like gut. Now when we talk about others, like in tapeworms, there is no elementary canal. So there is no mouth. So how do, how do they take the food? So look here, they absorb some so tapeworm is an example, they absorb food through the body wall. In others, if elementary canal is present, that elementary canal is incomplete gut. And this is also comparable to gastrovascular cavity of nidarian. So please remember this point. Next, so coming to the respiration and circulation, as I said. Mostly these are endoparasites. These endoparasites are mostly they are anaerobic because they live inside the gut. 
so there are no specialized organs to perform respiration and in free living forms it's just by a simple method of diffusion so there are no specialized respiratory structures and there are no specialized organs for circulation so circulatory and respiratory systems are absent and there are no specialized organs now the question is you can ask me how exactly the distribution of the food materials occur in these animals the interesting point here is i said in some they absorb the food through body wall like tapeworms so there is no process of i mean sending the food to all different parts whereas in others i said there is an elementary canal right but which has only a single opening and that elementary canal is branched so the food gets digested in the elementary canal and this digested food through these branches is supplied to all parts of the body so absence of circulatory system because circulatory system is not present here those performs are performed in some other way the animal has designed its body so both respiratory and circulatory systems are absent next coming to excretion excretion is performed with the help of protonephridia and the type of protonephridia which you can see in plant helium this or flame cells anywhere when you come across protonephridia protonephridia primary function is osma regulation and secondly they are useful for excretion please remember this point so here the primary function is osma regulation secondary function is excretion so this is the function of the protonephria we call them as the flame cells or flame bulbs next coming to the last reproduction in platyhelminthes all platyhelminthes are hermaphrodites bisexual we call them as monoecious both male and female gametes are produced by the same this is hermaphrodites or bisexual or we call them as monoecious so fertilization is internal development is indirect there is a larva here uh, one of the interesting feature is in some platyhelminthes like facial hepatica life history is complex with the several larval stages larval forms are several larval forms you can see in the life history of uh, facial hepatica you don't have to study all those things they are not in your syllabus but remember in some have got a complex life history in platyhelminthes the best example for this is facial hepatica which has several larval forms now generally sexual reproduction takes place here uh, there are some exceptions as sexual reproduction also occurs but we are not talking about that so here remember sexual reproduction takes place but there is one method like planarians so planarians so planaria is with highest regeneration regeneration in planaria is also one method of asexual reproduction so remember in the animal kingdom the remarkable power of regeneration is exhibited by planarians so planarians will show remarkable power of regeneration right so these are the characters of platyhelminthes now we'll talk with the ascelminthes ascelminthes as i said they are called as round worms so we'll see what are they so because they are first body form they are circular in cross section so they are called as round worms why we are calling them round worms because they are circular in cross section they are dorsoventrally flattened so we are calling them as flat worms next all these ascelminth is also so all ascelminthes or round worms are triploblastic with bilateral symmetry and are pseudocoelomates these are acoelomates these are pseudocoelomates and with organ system level of organization this is organ level so highest level of organization is organ system level of organization that starts from ascelminthes so from round worms this particular organization starts till the chordates next i said these are both free living as well as parasites just like platyhelminthes the free living forms here in ascelminthes are they could be either terrestrial or aquatic and parasites in both so they access parasite in both plants and animals as well right so 
just like here I said, they have got a tegument which is acting as an enzyme resistant layer. Here also their body is covered by cuticle which is also an enzyme resistant layer for all the parasites. So which is an enzyme resistant layer. Next, so coming to the next character that is digestion. So look, here I said elementary canal if present, it's incomplete. And in tapeworms, elementary canal is absent. So which they absorb the food directly through their skin, that is body wall. We call it as tegument. Whereas here, elementary canal is present, which is complete gut. Complete gut meaning is anterior mouth, posterior anus or cloaca. That's called as elementary canal, complete gut. Here, interesting thing is, these are pseudocilomates. So they have coelom, which is pseudocilom, which is filled with pseudocilomic fluid. That is responsible for transport of materials and everything. So here, gut is complete, but the thing is, elementary canal is without any muscles. Muscles are not present in the elementary canal except the anterior part of pharynx. So remember, elementary canal is completely non-muscular, but only the pharynx is muscular. Elementary canal is non-muscular, but only pharynx part of the gut is muscular. Next, same here also, respiratory and circulatory systems both are absent because anaerobically they respire in case of those all the free living forms it's done by a simple method of diffusion next coming to the circulatory system here circulatory system is absent and the the advantage here is uh, because the circulatory system is not present in ascalmanthes or roundworms all the functions of the circulatory system are done by the pseudocilome because the pseudocilome is filled with pseudocilomic fluid it only responsible for transport of all the digested food materials nitrogenous waste materials and everything right next so coming to excretion something different here here i said flame cells are present protonephria are present here the excretory ducts so here excretory ducts the canals they carry the nitrogenous waste and through excretory pore it opens into the coelom and from there they are sent to the outside by excretory pores there are some special i mean this is how the excretion is performed here excretory ducts are present they collect all the nitrogen waste from coelom and that is sent to the excretory pore and where this excretory pore will send them to the outside that is how excretion is performed here next coming to the rust reproduction here i said hermaphrodites here you can see these are unisexual right there is sexual dimorphism can also be seen we'll discuss that character here next so fertilization is internal and development is indirect same fertilization is internal development is indirect here also fertilization is internal development is indirect the thing is that your ascalmanthes are roundworms which are unisexual and there is sexual dimorphism meaning is male and female can be differentiated with their external characters let us find out one or two sexually differentiating characters of your ascalmanthus just look at this diagram this is roundworm ascaris this is male this is female sexual differentiation male is short and female is long this is a first sexual differentiating character. Next, look at the, this is the anterior end. This is the posterior end. Posterior end of the male is curved and female is straight. This is a second character. First females are longer. Often males are short. The posterior end of the male is curved. Female is straight. And near the posterior end of the male, you can see there are a pair of copulatory spicules copulatory spicules are present in male at the posterior end but whereas in female there are no copulatory spicules and also male is with cloaca so these copulatory spicules are present near the cloaca male is with cloaca and female is with anus so this is how the sexual dimorphism can be seen in both 
males and females of Ascalmanthus. Okay, the last coming to the examples of these Platyhelminthus. Examples of Platyhelminthus includes these two examples. Remember, tinea is tapeworm, fascia is called liver fluke. One more, these two are parasites. Planaria is free living, which is called Dagasia. Three examples for Platyhelminthus. Next, coming to the Ascalmanthus. Ascaris is roundworm, which will cause ascariasis, is the name of the disease. Ucaria is called filarial worm, which will cause filariasis or elephantiasis. Ankylostoma is called hookworm, ankylostomiasis is the disease caused by it. That's all, these are the characters of uh, Platyhelminthus and Ascalmanthus.